Hi, my name is DJ Clark. I'm a multimedia journalist and an educator based in Beijing. And I'm here in Tunisia, in Tunis, on a World Press Photo Workshop. And I have with me here Matt Ford to talk about video editing. So maybe, Matt, you can start by introducing yourself. Tell me who you are and what you're doing right now. I've already introduced me a little bit. But um, yeah, my name is Matt Ford. I'm the interactive media director for a company that I founded about nine months ago, uh, Vignette Interactive which is uh, incorporated the United Arab Emirates and focuses on telling stories and working with um, companies that, that need help with digital solutions in the Middle East. Now, when you start thinking about a video story, what are the key elements that you're looking at when you're thinking about the edit process? What are the things that you think are, that's going to make a really good story and that's going to cut really well when I put it on the, on the timeline? Um, for, for me, it's, it's usually something really simple. It's, you know, boils down to relationships, like relationships between people, or there's something unique or surprising that, that I can build up to a reveal. I mean, I, I try to, like, focus on, like, one, one thing that's going to grab people in a story. And when you're, you're researching the project, the, the process of from starting the project to finishing the project, what is your workflow? How, how do you go about putting together a story? Maybe you can give me an example of one story and how you went through that whole process from beginning to end. Yeah, I mean, like I think like a lot of stories in journalism, it just starts with getting smart. You know, you're doing a lot of research. Um, sometimes it even starts at someplace simple like Wikipedia. Like um, a recent project we did was on the Nubians um, in Upper Egypt, um, or like down south near the uh, the border with Sudan. Um, and all I knew was that the, the Nubians had this culture and that they were removed when the dam was built. And I really didn't know much else about them. So I spent probably a good few hours, you know, reading everything I could find on them, Googling, looking for academic papers that people had done, what was the status of, of their resettlement. And the more and more I found out about, the more little interesting elements kept popping in that I was like, oh, that could be an interesting story element, or that could be an interesting story element. And then once I felt like I had enough background knowledge, um, I still had a lot of questions. Then I go and start to talk to a lot of people. So I talk to the people who wrote those academic papers and ask them to fill in some of the blanks for me. I tried to talk to people that, that were actually living there and going through a lot of this stuff. Um, and so as it went along, then I was like, okay, these are locations that I should be going to. These are things I should be going to. And eventually it took until probably about a week before I found out that there was this, this new settlement the, the Nubian people have been trying to move back south of the dam to their to their traditional lands that they were removed from 50 years ago, and it's basically a ghost town. So I'm like, Nubians trying to move back, and they're living in a giant ghost town. Now that's unique. That's interesting. And there's families who are trying to rebuild their community. You've got like personal relationships too. So I'm like, that could be an interesting uh, narrative there. And then moving on from that, after you've shot the, the project, you've got all this material, and you need to try and figure out a way of creating a story. So how do you do that? Um, for me, well, I've got, I've got steps I do all along the way. So my, when I'm out on a shoot, my, my production workflow is basically I get back, I back everything up on multiple drives, and then I'm also doing like a rough you know, review of my stuff. So I'm like quickly going through my interviews, seeing if there's anything that pops in my head that I might definitely want to use and I need to get more visuals of the next day. Um, I'm just kind of like noting what is, what is the star stuff in here. Um, so that I can keep like building on that while I'm shooting. Then once I get back, I do a, a kind of a more thorough run through of, of all the stuff I can understand. I mean, the thing working in the Middle East, a lot of, I, I speak a little bit of Arabic, but not enough to fully translate all my interviews. So I'll send the Arabic stuff off to a translator and I'll go through the English stuff myself and I'll pick out stuff that, that's a sound bite. Whether or not it might make the story, it's like stuff that's good sound, they're talking about different issues, it's usable sound. Then that I will write and move into a script and I'll take the what comes back from my translator, and I'll go through and highlight everything that I really like, and I'll start moving it around in a document um, to try and build out the, the order of the story. And I try to, like, using the initial edit, focus on some kind of simple structure, something that's like three acts. So for the Nubian story, it was who are the Nubians, and then what happened to the Nubians, and then what's going on with the Nubians now. I mean, it's very simple conceptually. And so that becomes my... my an, like initial storyline. And this is all being done on paper, is it, or, or on the computer? Or? All that is done on paper, yeah. Right. So we often think about video editing being on computers, but you're saying 
that the first stage is to do everything on paper and so it makes sense before you then take that and move it onto the timeline? I mean, the first stage is really getting familiar with everything that I have. And then once I'm familiar with everything I have, it's far easier to, to move around on paper and just conceptually move stuff around than it is to actually work in the physical software and, and timeline because you just there's a lot of moving entire chunks around. So once I have that rough outline, then I do like a really wide edit. So like the first edit of my piece, if it's eventually going to be a three minute piece, it might be a 10 minute piece initially. It's like every possible sound bite that, that works in it. And then I just start killing babies. You know, I just like, you know, I like this, but it's not as good as this part. And then I keep trimming it down and trimming it down. Um, and then from there, it's like I've got, that's all with audio. So when I'm actually editing in the timeline, that's pretty much just audio. I'm only, I'm only bringing in video that's associated with my like ambient sound or transitions and that stuff, how I'm going to move from, from one scene or one topic to another. And if you had a voiceover, I guess that would be in there as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, so definitely. Like it's basically everything from the ambient sound to interview subjects to voiceover, that's all built in. So if I close my eyes, I can hear the story as it would be finished. But the video is a mess. It's not dialed in yet. And then once I'm happy with the audio, then I go through and I start really reworking the transitions, figuring out how the sequencing is going to move from one to another, and really start filling out the piece. So basically, we, we, we're talking about getting the story structure down first, being happy with that, and then filling out the rest, doing the, the smoothing of the audio and adding the extra B-roll and the extra video footage. Yeah. So one of the problems that we've got with the participants here at the moment is they're out shooting lots of stuff, lots of video, recording sound, ambient sound, room tone, sounds of things that they hear, they're shooting still pictures, all to bring into their projects, but it's all over the place. So how do you organize a project so that you can take it through from, from having all of that me media, ingesting it onto your computer, and have it in a place where you can find it, you can organize it, and then you can back it up because it's a lot of data. It will fill up your hard drive very quickly with one of these projects, right? Mm. So how do you go about that sort of organizational? I mean, this is, I've, pretty much everybody I know has their own personal style for this, and I've found the one that works for me. And I do mine based around shooting days, which I think stems from me working in the film industry before. So. You know, I know what my shooting days are going to be on most projects beforehand, and I know what I'm going to tackle on those days, and I've got you know, documentation of what I plan to do on each of those days. So then when I'm backing it up, at the end of every day, I'm archiving, and I've got, you know, I've got it on my computer, and I've got it on two other places at the end of every day. And I store that way through the end of the project. So you know, even today, if I'm going back on something I shot five weeks ago, I know where it is because it was on that shooting day of the production schedule. And once that's backed up, like once that shooting day is done, I'm never adding more content to it because it's day related. Um, and then what I will do, so that's, con so the, the stuff that really eats up all the space is already backed up and never has to be backed up again in all those places. Then everything else, additional research, additional documents, uh, different visualizations, motion graphics go into new places that are backed up you know, as it goes forward. But those are more lightweight. Those don't, you know, usually take up as much space. And then I've got a whole bunch of other sequences and everything else. And I'll move interviews into their own sequences to just work on interviews, or I'll have a sequence for each version of an edit, and I basically duplicate it and start anew. So I can always go back to original edits. Because typically, like we talked about before, once I get that audio edit done, I start filling in the video, I might decide I want to blow it up and try it a different way and move things all the way around. But I might decide that doesn't work and I've got, I can still go back to like edit, rough edit version three or whatever. So all of that stuff, so there's the initial media when it all comes in, it's all backed up and, and archived by shooting day, and then there's the actual stuff I'm doing in post-production, which I'm just backing that up as I'm doing each iteration of it. And for the participants here, and also for the people that are studying on our Connected Learning online forum, what would be a single tip, if you only had one tip to give a multimedia journalist wanting to work in video editing, what would that one tip be? To remember that the final product is always the edit. Like that's where the story is told when you bring it all together. And so being out and shooting, you're shooting for that edit. You know, it's, it's very easy to get distracted and be like, oh, that's pretty, and oh, that's interesting, and now oh, that'll make like a, a well-framed shot. But if it doesn't help drive your story forward, you're just, you know, you're burning digital film. So, like to really have a, a production plan to make sure that you're getting all the story elements and that you're really building towards what that, that final story is going to be. 
Matt, thank you very much. We're now going to have to get back to our participants as they're working on their projects and hope people who are watching this at home are also having success with their video editing. It can be a frustrating thing. Thank you very much. Thank you.